Because next week is the 40th anniversary of the police riot at Orgreave. Thank you to everyone who's campaigned with us over the last 12 years for an Orgreave inquiry. Inquiry into events related to Orgreave on the 18th of June 1984. Today has been the biggest Orgreave rally we ever had. And let's hope that we get the justice that we deserve on this 40th anniversary. <laughs> It is about a government who actively works against its own population. It is about handing the police paramilitary powers and destroying an industry in the process. Pre-planned, pre-ordained and pre-decided that they would fight and break communities to smash trade unions and smash collectivism everywhere. Long before the Thatcher government came into power, there was planning to go for the strongest union. If we can get the strongest union, then we're on the way to privatising everything. Orgreave marks a turning point for the strike and in the policing of protest. The Tories decided to use the full weight of the states and crush the miners who were picketing to stop the transport of coke to supply the steel plant at Scunthorpe. All power stations burned coke and the coke came from coking plants and all over those were picketed. Thatcher, in her autobiography, she says the problem we've got is at the steel plants and the coking plants, and that is where we have to concentrate what we have to do. She admitted that they would not be able to withstand any longer than three to five weeks had we picketed on an ongoing basis, not only at Orgreave, but in other places as well. The number of riot police were 8,000 200. We faced them with 10,000 pickets. They had horses, dogs, long shields, short shields, truncheons. It was a horrific day and it's a miracle no one was killed. I was knocked out as well, put in a hospital bed. I do think it's to our eternal shame as a movement that we did not call for a general strike at that time. Even though it was illegal, we would not move coal. If they were scared of two unions, what could they have done if we'd all back together? I came into the Battle of Orgreave in the aftermath at the police station in Rotherham with 95 men bleeding, traumatised, being told that they were facing charges that carried life imprisonment. They were seized as if it was a war. They were captured like prisoners of war. There was no pretense of police interviews. The charges were drawn up in advance. When miners were waiting to go on trial, the BBC had footage showing what really happens. They sat on it for 40 years and they are still sitting on it. It's yes. shameful. Our weapon was very simple. Trying to evidence what actually happened on that day that was our advantage, because the police knew nothing. They did not know who they had captured or why. Suddenly notebooks disappeared because they realised they were heading for a charge of perjury. The prosecution having to abandon the trial as lie after lie. It was a victory, but it was bittersweet. I know a lot of the men who live with them events every day, every day of our lives. And we should never, never underestimate the effect that that had on them and their family. People often ask, why do you commemorate Aubrey 40 years on? It's in the past. The reason we commemorate this injustice is because the same pattern has been repeated. You look at Grenfell, the anniversary was just yesterday. You look at Hillsborough, you look at the post office scandal, you look at the Windrush scandal, 
This is the pattern. Working class communities always treated as criminals first and victims second. And the real criminals are always let off scot-free. If you look at the rhetoric deployed by people like Thatcher, we see the same rhetoric today, often used against British Muslims, often used against people standing up against genocide in Gaza. We recognise the affinities which we share with the struggle of 1984. And though I myself never lived to see the horrors of that time, I think I speak for all the students when I say that we live in the long shadow of Thatcherism and Thatcherist repression. When our union funds were seized, when our assets were frozen, when we were attacked, when we were brutalised, when we were called the enemy within. Shame. Well, I'm proud to still be an enemy within. <laughs> we stood tall for a whole year. We never bowed. We never faltered. And that's what we celebrate. The strike of 1984 5 remains an inspiration. It's a privilege for me to be here today with all of you that were there on that day. We learnt our politics, we learnt our trade unionism from the miners of the people of the past. Civil society and trade unions coming back together, people learning the value of class once more. We have been out for 23 months and we will beat them. What is important to our campaign is that due to the age and health of many miners, we quickly secure a public acknowledgement of why and what the state did to the miners at their communities. An inquiry of full disclosure can help to right the wrongs of the past and influence the future behaviour of the state and public officials. Even the Tories were going to authorise an inquiry before the Home Secretary was forced to change her position by former government ministers who have been directly involved in the miners' strike. The proof of us from the campaign will be presenting a detailed report <laughs> highlighting why we need an inquiry and what we expect from it. We will be delivering it to the Home Office and the main political parties. So we hope that you'll share that information far and wide. And thank you again everybody for coming along to support your campaign.